Welcome, David. And uh, I know you've had an incredible experience and um, wealth of knowledge about the venture capital industry being in it for so long. Morgan Thaler is obviously a really um, well-respected firm you, and you've had a lot of publicity publicity in the recent times. So I'm just wondering, is there any stories about things that might have happened that you would think that I'd be interested in, that my viewers would be interested in, if I could ask you? Well, I've been around for so long that I'm, I've reached a conclusion I'm a slow learner, but at least, <laughs> at least the saving grace is I've had a long time to learn. I um, basically came out of the war and helped start a company in 1945, so I've been around. And uh, the war itself was, was, a, was a, a learning kind of experience um, where those of us that were young reserve officers just fresh out of school were thrown into management situations where we got a great deal of experience. Um, I've, um, looking back on that, that experience, um, when um, I was 24 years old, I was working for a 37-year-old colonel. The colonel was, um, had, um, had 27 airfields in southeastern Italy that he was responsible for. I was his chief technical officer and his, um, also his headquarters and service company commander. 24 years old, I had um, 300 Americans and 600 Italian civilians working for me. It's a wonder we won the war. <laughs> so what about uh, in the venture industry? Is there any a, a story that you would have that uh, was would be interesting and fascinating for my viewers? Well, it's been interesting to look at the way the industry has developed. Um, um, I began my um, company, founded my company, after 11 years of running first a company and then a group of companies where I had venture capital investors. And um, I started in the Midwest. It wasn't clear at that time whether Boston or San Francisco were going to be the winners. And um, so I, I had a strong foot already in that I was chairman of the executive committee of a New York exchange company on Route 1, um, uh, 128 as a sideline activity. And I, but I, the West Coast was behind at that point. But clearly was promising in coming up and it, interestingly um, I was betting on the East Coast originally but I fortunately had the sense to put in a West Coast affiliation and uh, the West Coast won out very <laughs> thoroughly over the end. Right. The, um, I mean there have been countless stories our firm has invested in I've lost count now but it's um, something well over 300 and close to 400 companies wow. of all types and uh, we've been one of the um, companies that do both early stage venture capital um, in information technology, um, also in life sciences, and also do private equity investing uh, through different teams of people. But um, it's been interesting to watch the involvement of those industries and how, those, how things have changed over this period. We started off in venture capital when the original venture capital firms were not very close. When in um, 19, about 1972 or three, Ned Heiser put together the National Venture Capital Association, which I joined in the formation of, and venture capitalists then began to work much more closely together. I think on the West Coast, um, you were always working more closely together. Um, the industry started very informally out here and evolved into the institutions. The East uh, started with ins more with institutions as such. But it's been extremely interesting. There are countless stories and uh, <laughs> as too to, many to think of. <laughs> too, too many to remember all yeah, of. And the, yeah, yeah. The, I could spend the afternoon talking about the mistakes that we are any other venture capitalists usually make. And it is such a, a time of uh, transition in the industry and um, I guess I see lots of positive things coming out of that. Uh, from where you sit uh, with such a big a broad range of experience, would you say that there's positive changes that you can see happening in the industry? 
Well, um, I'm um, essentially uh, retired from normal industry activities, yeah. so I'm, um, I'm not the best person to ask about what's going on at the moment. Okay. Um, historically, venture capital rides the waves of innovation. We, um, many people think it's the climate, many people think it's the culture and atmosphere and so on, and these are all strong supporting forces. But we have to recognize that every so often as we look back through history, um, there is a wave of innovation. If we look at what the world was like before the steam engine, for example, and examine some parallels to today, before the steam engine, if one's realized in the whole history of mankind, you, man never could travel faster than the back of a horse. Um, since then, of course, the steam engine was invented. Nobody particularly wants a steam engine in their backyard. But on the other hand, think of all the things it enabled. And um, it enabled trains, it enabled um, um, the man for the first time to make these higher speeds, it enabled the upriver travel, it made enable faster ocean travel. And then you, you go forward 100 years, 150 years, and take the innovations. And what we, we've written, and people fail to realize it, in the 20th century, we, read, we, read, we rode the backs of two great inventions, the semiconductor and DNA as such. And those have just enabled countless opportunities that simply were not possible without them. And it's been, this has been the story of the 20th century. And the West Coast has been both fortunate and clever enough to um, have gotten the leadership in both semiconductors and everything that they, that it, they enabled and are still enabling. Um, and the, to take the leadership in, in what can be done from the learning of DNA as such. Look, thank you so much for your time. Um, I know you, that you've uh, tied up here at MVCA and I really appreciate that you've given us a little bit of time. Thank you. Well, thank you for listening and I hope, hope this has been useful. Um, yes. The, um, I, I, I like, let me leave you with an analogy uh, that you wanted a, a colorful story. Yes. In Cleveland, where I started, Cleveland, uh, people don't realize that 100 to 120 years ago, it was the Silicon Valley of America. It's interesting to watch as its industries matured and it failed to capture the new industries. Um, it dropped out. Um, um, when it fell behind and it, it, it rode its, the short summary is that it, the automotive industry was a wonderful 60 year um, horse to ride. The problem with the, mid, the Rust Belt cities was they rode it for a hundred years and they failed to get the new industries and in failing to do that, why um, the, the, we, we just missed out on the, the features of the 20th century. And I, I maintain and, and to, to teach the people in Cleveland uh, about venture capital where it was not common, <clears throat> the a metaphor the horse, of course, is the technology that you ride. The concept, recognizing that even McDonald's has a concept, though it's not a technology concept. And uh, here, of course, it's usually technology. The market, of course, is the race. Um, and the uh, jockeys, of course, are the entrepreneurs. Venture capitalists are not the jockeys. Cleveland couldn't quite appreciate that. Um, the venture capitalists are the owner trainers, and uh, that's a metaphor I used around Cleveland to explain the situation. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you.